So, yes, you were on radio frequency, and and so, what, did you have to sub, submit a written form to your probation officer, or did you just phone him, or did you have to schedule your movements in advance? I mean, like for example, when when I had I I used, I gave him a schedule of movements for like two weeks. I mean, did you do something like that, or did you do it on a daily basis? How did you set up the movements? Well, um, when I was on the uh, telephone system, the two-way radio uh, electronic monitoring system, I had to meet with my uh, probation officer at least once a week and kind of give him a rundown of um, my movements. Now, he already had a... Uh, a uh, a time frame of when I'm leaving the house and when I'm coming back, but he wanted specifics. Um, so they would just show me, all right, what is this right here? Where were you going right there? And you had to account for everything that, uh, every movement that you made, which, uh, you know, in the beginning, um, I was just so happy to be um, out of jail that, you know, I was uh, willing, I mean, I was still willing to comply with everything, but it just became so tedious writing down everything you did, um, being a, accountable for every part of your life. Um, so did you have like, I mean, did he say like, okay, from eight to four you can be out, or did he say like, or did you have to request a specific block of time to do a specific activity? You definitely had to request anything that you wanted to do outside of sitting at home. Okay. Um, I uh, tried to work around that by becoming proactive in my own, uh, uh, my own life by, I would, I would ask, first of all, could I go to church? And that was something that was, uh, that resounded well with not only him, but you know, the judge. But, you know, that wasn't daily. So you're going to church, you're uh, releasing all of your uh, frustration and anger, you're hearing a good message, um, and that's keeping you sustained maybe for a couple of days, but then you become depressed. Mm -hmm. um, the only thing that you could really do was go to the refrigerator and eat as much as you want, but then television became a nuisance, sleeping became a nuisance, your, your patterns of living um, were definitely so, constrained. So you spent a lot of time in the house then, basically. Yeah, and it was, not only was I getting fat, I was, I was getting more depressed. Yeah. I felt like uh -huh. there was nothing positive that I was yeah. doing for myself. So what I ended up doing was uh, asking my probation officer if I could go to school now, mind you, I had already had two degrees before I got in trouble, but um, school was a way for me to interact. It uh, was a, a way for me to get out of this depressive state that I was in, and it was also a, um, a way for me to learn um, something that I have always wanted to do, which was uh, video production. And in doing so, I met a lot of people that I'm still friends with to this day. Um, and it was a positive because it was getting me out of the home between three and five days a week now. Um, I won't say that I wasn't being monitored or people didn't show up just to make sure I was there because they do have the ability and the right, I believe, when you sign this form to show up anywhere that you've been tracked to. That's right. <laughs> and if, if yeah. it's not, you know, under the confines of, you know, what they deem as, as uh, good or um, following the rules, then there is a potential for you to be violated at that moment, not going back to court, but at that moment, going right back to prison right. or to jail. Yeah, so... So you, so at the at maximum during that time you got out like three to five days a week, but then there were other days you were just in the house the whole time. Is that right? Yeah, for the first definitely for the first man for the first maybe six months. Mm -hmm. um, they gave me no support other than 
report and go home. Yeah. And uh, so they never they never offered to like help you look for a job or give you any kind of clues on, on other on other issues. Was there anything? They they offered some services that are state funded or some not for profits where you could get some help, where you could get some help, but there really is no help. Um, those are every program that I've ever been involved in is not in the benefit of finding you a job, but or at least in my experience, I think they're just entities that offer um, a way to pacify you um, in order for you to uh, in order for their agency to exist. So, what are they doing? Like teaching you how to do job interviews and filling out resumes, right. and that kind of stuff. Teaching yeah. you how to, you know, yeah. Which, which, which you, you didn't need anyway, because I mean, you're already. Yeah, I'm already you're, degreed. You're, yeah, you. I have that. resumes. I've got business right. plans. And you got jobs. Like that. You have a plumbing history. Yes, so it's not relevant. Yeah, but what was relevant was the fact that you know, even though I didn't need it, I did go just yeah. to be around other people because I believe that uh, socialization. Mm. Um, is a it's therapeutic for yeah. the mind yeah. more so than being confined right. to your own self to your own thoughts. So during this during this time, where were you living? I was living with my mother. Living with your mother, and I was <laughs> sleeping on the couch. Sleeping on the couch. <laughs> that's, that's pretty so bad. Was but, it, yeah. So stressful on you? Was it stressful on her? Do you think? Or yeah, she, did not she, in the beginning. Cause did she, she express happy. that? Or, or yes. Um, after maybe uh, going on the year of uh, being uh, living uh, under those conditions, you know, you could tell. Uh, first of all, she was happy in the beginning to have her son home, but the more you become a um, an eyesore, the more you become a hindrance on her private life. You know, um, everybody has their own way that they want, mm. they, they choose to live their life, and if somebody's always there, mm. 24 hours a day, is not allowed to do anything other than go look for a job, and they only give you several hours to go do that, then you got to plant yourself right back there. When she right. gets off from work, she's like, ah, you know, just not disgusted, but just how, how much longer is this going to go on, and right. can I have right. my life back, and you know, I know I, I asked, you know, I know I promised you that. I would do this to to help you mm -hmm. in this situation, but it became stressful for her. I became uh, um, reclusive uh, mm -hmm. because I didn't want to be there when she got there, mm -hmm. uh, just so she could unwind the way she wanted to. Um, so, so I mean, I'll, I'll be don't mind me asking, but I'm just so. Do, I mean, did you feel? Do you feel a certain kind of guilt or something like you're bringing this extra burden into your mother, or is that? I was definitely a burden. Yeah. Um, you know, every every parent loves their child, but yeah, um, I definitely became a burden on how she. Um, I, I, sometimes I don't think she even wanted to come home because she knew I was there, and I mm. I didn't want to be there because I couldn't help my situation. Mm. Um, wow. My mother's relationship and. and Mine has been better yeah. since you know I have yeah. my own place and yeah, I'm, I'm doing sure, my own sure. thing. Yeah, yeah. But at that particular moment, uh, when I needed her the most, you know, to get me mm. uh, at you know at her um, residence for me to even be on this program, it was a massive undertaking because she really didn't have to do it. But after several months, you could tell just in her body language and some of her comments that mm. it was weighing on her. Yeah. Sanity, <laughs> but I love you. Bro. Yeah, <laughs> that's right. That's no, that's um, it's big. I mean, I know you know your family. You're they're doing tremendous things to help you get through all this, but and at the same time, there's nothing you can do to compensate for that at the at the at, the, at that moment because that you're stuck. You know? You're just stuck. And yeah, you to, and just, you can't make any money. Yeah, um, that you become, you know. You become a burden, and as far as food, as far as gas, water, electricity, yeah. everything goes up. Um, yeah. yeah, 
that is one of the caveats to be yeah, on electronic monitor. Hmm. I mean, it's really yeah. depressive, though. Yeah. You have your freedom, but it's... What's sad is you really... Freedom can be taken. That I think that's the number one thing I learned. The people that have never been in my situation that have their freedom um, don't know, A, that it can be taken away, but don't know what it feels like to be under the rules and regulations of some governing agency um, that have a right legally to uh, forfeit your freedom. Mm. So did you? Did they? Did they? Did they do like surprise searches at your house or anything? <laughs> All the time. Uh, Home invasions, as we like to call them. <laughs> they did a lot of that. They definitely came by whenever they felt like it. Now they might call them routine visits, but they weren't announced. No, they. I never knew when they were coming, and uh, I always. You know, was always caught off guard when, and then the, you know they come with a, uh, they come with, they come themselves with someone else, and then with someone with someone that can arrest you and take you to jail right there. So it, it's always threefold, nine times out of ten, and I'm not uh, saying this is good or bad, but you know I, it caused me a lot of anxiety. Mm. Because uh, you never know what to expect. Well, I mean, I guess one of the things that it raises with me is if they're talking about, I mean, for example, if they're talking about this being a cheaper alternative than being on regular parole or something, how does this work? Because you're, because they seem to be using a lot of re, a lot of human resources as well. If you're on electronic monitoring, why are they bothering to just pop in and check on you all the time? I mean, the purpose of the electronic monitoring is supposed to make sure that you are there. So. Did they I mean, know you're they, there. I think. Did they come in to search? Did they search your house? Oh yeah, they, look for they definitely search the uh, residence. They, um, yeah, that's the number one reason why they come. You know, they know you're there, but what are you doing in there? So they're looking for they're looking for drugs over there. They're looking Basically. for drugs, alcohol, drug paraphernalia. They're looking for who's over there with you. Mm, I don't know if anybody uh, with a criminal record. No. Right, right. Are you were you banned from using alcohol during this period? Yes, yes. I was never really, you know, but drinker I, anyway. So, I mean, like, say.